What's up? What's good with y'all, man? Here back on another day. Uh, my top 20 moments of 2013, part 2. Told you I was coming back with another one. My number 10 is Peter Gunn's Love and Hip Hop Moments. I think that this nigga is a clown. I think this nigga is a whack as fuck. I thought Stevie J was the fool on that show, but obviously Peter Gunn takes the cake. I mean, he with a chick that he had babies with. He married the side piece. What part of the game is that? Who marries the side piece? And the drama that he going through, the way they ridiculed that nigga for having dirty feet on Twitter, and it's just like, my nigga, you still supposed to hop in the shower. I don't give a fuck. What's the situation? Play with your kids or not. So that's my number 10 uh, moment. I think that shit just was hilarious. My number 9 moment, Tiana Taylor and Rihanna Twitter beef. Now, that shit was classic because of the simple fact that Tiana Taylor really could sing, you know, she really feels passionate about herself and really want to do, you know, her music thing. And Rihanna took it upon herself to have her friend or whatever make fun of her. And we all know Rihanna been, you know, picking at people on Twitter, but Tiana was like, bitch, you got me fucked up. I ain't going for it. We know each other personally. If it was felt like that, you have feelings like that, bitch, you know my number. You feel me? And it's been seen that Tiana Taylor got hands, you know what I mean? She beat the shit out of some bitch in the club. So, at the end of the day, Rihanna really didn't want it, you know what I'm saying? Because she took all that shit off her Twitter page and, and put up, like, some makeup or something. So, that moment was, like, hella crazy. My number eight moment has to be uh the Drake and Chris Brown situation, you know what I mean? Like, that whole club fight shit over Rihanna was insane. You know, it goes that, I guess... Chris Brown in one section, Drake in one section. Drake has sent, you know, the nigga a bottle of champagne or something with a note that's saying, yo, yo, first love or something, fell in love with me or some shit like that. And they got into some altercations and Chris Brown sent the bottle back and all type of shit. McMeek somehow got in the middle of that shit. But, you know, that just was crazy. You know what I'm saying? That has to be my number eight moment. That shit was bananas. <laughs> my number seven top moment of 2013, Kanye West bring Jesus on tour. I was not expecting that at all. I know Kanye do some crazy shit. Yeah, I could have talked about his rants all year, his drunken rants, him running into a pole, you know, but just the whole bringing Jesus on tour was kind of crazy because I don't think nobody expected it. I thought it was a fluke when I heard about it, you know what I'm saying? And people was, um, like, capturing like the moment and then you had catching the pictures like oh somebody mad about Coachella or something like that it just was crazy you know what I mean Kanye always is like a genius when it comes to the music regardless of people still don't fuck with Jesus that you it'll take five to ten years from now y'all gonna look back on that album and see how classic it was so you know what I mean but yeah that's my um number seven moment my number six moment goes to Nipsey Hussle for the first artist to put out a hundred dollar CD I could not believe this shit when I first heard it, I was like, really? Nobody gonna fucking pay $100 for some free shit. But the marketing, the way he did it, it was genius. You know what I'm saying? Once Hov bought 100 copies, already knew that it was something to catch on. But at the end of the day, Nipsey Hussle made sense of it. I mean, you get the music, you get a concert, and you get, like, a novelty item because you get the packaging. You know what I'm saying? I always thought mixtapes was dope. Yeah, they go online free, but if I had a chance to buy them, you know what I'm saying? I would because I want to see the packaging and everything like that. But I think this was a great idea. He going to do the same thing for Victory Lap. So at the end of the day, Nipsey Hussle gets the number six spot with a $100 CD. That was bananas. My number five uh, top moment of 2013 has to go to Wale with his rant against Complex Magazine. Now, we all know Wale's been not mentioned in a lot of lists that people have had over the years. You know, he's very underrated. He's one of the greatest lyricists, you know what I mean, of this generation. I mean, I went back and listened to all his mixtapes. You know, The Gifted was one of my personal favorite albums. If you just listen to the way he constructed it, you know, he zoned out on that album. You know, just the Jesus Peace song alone, like, the way he describes it, I was listening to it in a sense like, wait, he's actually rapping as if he is a Jesus Peace or Jesus himself. You know what I'm saying? So I had to really pay attention to that whole concept. That was a fucking classic song. A lot of them songs on the album is dope as hell. Like, he really put his heart into that album, and yet and still it's only at 200-some thousand copies. I'm confused. Like, it should be at least gold. You know what I mean? But 
his rant against them, it made sense, you know what I mean? They brought up the whole Kid Cudi situation, and I remember when that happened, when, you know, Kid Cudi basically dissed Wale in the magazine. They both dope artists, you know what I mean? And it was good to see them actually come back together and get back together, you know what I mean, and do music together. But that's my number five um, top moment of 2013. My number four moment has to be, you know, I thought it was crazy, but Sharkeisha versus Sha Michelle or Shay Michelle, however the fuck you want to, you know what I'm saying, say that, you know, her name. I, they both got some weird ass names, but the fight that was on World Star that had everybody going crazy, everybody putting out captions, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a fool. This is not the first time that we actually seen something happen on World Star with somebody quote unquote famous, you know what I'm saying, for um fighting or whatever. I forget, y'all yeah, remember the girl that was in the locker room when she was being bullied and she bit, beat the shit out that girl? You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah, remember that incident? So when I seen the Sarkeesha shit, I was like, well, this ain't nothing new. I would personally say the girl that was in the locker room, that incident, you know, was better than this one. But it's like, I don't promote violence. But if you had to rate it, that girl in the locker room definitely gave that bitch that work. She put their hands on that girl because, you know, the whole bullying shit. But Sharkeisha, if you look at the situation, she snuck her ass. The girl didn't want no problems. She was just basically having her head down like this. And it was over a nigga. It was paused, but it was over, like, some dick paused. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you young bitches is fighting over that when y'all should be getting an education, you know what I mean, try to get a job, and y'all fighting over that. It just shows me that this younger generation is lost as fuck if they fighting over niggas, and the niggas sitting back not even tripping off none of you bitches, because he probably was the next bitch laughing at you hoes. But yeah, that's my number four moment. Moving on, my number three moment has to be Miley Cyrus MTV Music Award performance. A lot of people bashed her, a lot of people said what they wanted to say. I still felt like Miley Cyrus is just doing it for pure entertainment. And as you see, she's been the talk of the whole year. You know what I mean? From her twerking to her videos to um, her Halloween costumes, everything she does, she understands the public eye and know how to make people talk about her and keep her name in their mouth. So definitely, you know, her MTV Music Awards performance was crazy. I was not expecting that shit, you know what I mean, the twerking or whatever on Robin Thicke, and he went out like a bitch and tried to say, oh, I didn't know she was going to do that. My nigga stopped lying because we all know how the world shows you have to do, you know what I'm saying, the practice run first before the rehearsal, I mean, before it comes to the live show. So this nigga, at the end of the day, know what was going down, you know what I mean, but I definitely got to pick that at my number three. My number two moment of 2013, Adrian Berner first loss. He got knocked down twice. Nobody seen this shit coming. I know I didn't. When I was watching the fight and the first time he went down, I was like, oh shit. The whole Adrian Broner swag persona is over with. Because I watched the, you know what I mean, the access before all that shit and he was talking all that shit about I'm going to knock this nigga the fuck out, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And at the end of the day, what he went wrong was actually moving up in a weight class. So he actually got to see that nigga when you fight somebody of a good caliber that's not no pushover, you're going to get your ass whooped. And at the end of the day, we just see he's not the best as he say he is. You know what I'm saying? I call it the Kanye syndrome where you feel you better than everybody and you really not. You know what I mean? And I seen the post interview. You know what I mean? He gave props to him, but he still was on that dumb shit. I'm still AB. It's still all about billions, all that shit. And I think his job was broke because this shit was fat. If you look at the video, clearly the bitch in the background, she was just looking crazy like this. Like she just so sad and everything like that because it's like, yeah, your man got his ass whooped. So that's my number two uh, moment of 2013. And my number one. Top 20 moments of 2013, if y'all didn't know it, y'all should already know it. Beyonce, fifth album, breaks iTunes records. I could have picked anything to talk about, but this shit just was bananas. Because once she dropped it without anybody knowing, she slapped the shit out of Jay-Z for his marketing plan that he did. It totally shitted on that. It showed what he did. It's like, look, babe. I know you did this, but I'm about to do this and do it better than you. So I know whole ego got to be shot. You know what I'm saying? And it just broke so many records. Three hours, it did 80,000. Then in a week, it did 600,000, 807,000 worldwide. It's now platinum. In two weeks, she went platinum. You did what I'm saying? And another slap in the face to Target because some Targets have Starbucks inside their Target. And Starbucks actually has 
the CD selling in there. And I went to Starbucks today or whatever and got me a caramel wrap, and yet they got it in there. So fuck you, Target, anywhere it go, she still got her CD inside your store. So regardless of everything, that has to be the hustle of the year. The best album, I'm not going to say of the year, but definitely the most top moment of 2013. She just surprised everybody and definitely shocked everybody with that. The way she just dropped it like, bam, here you go, take it, and you're going to love it. And with visuals for it. That's crazy, my nigga. So when she started putting shit on the radio and we started seeing visuals on TV, y'all already going to know. You know, this album is already platinum. I say it's going to do about double. You know what I mean? But that's part two of my top 20 moments of 2013. Hope y'all enjoy watching. Like, I enjoyed making a video for y'all. And happy holidays.